Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa, the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Although these videos that I put together and the blogs and my website, paulbeckwith.net, if you just uh, Google paulbeckwith.net or Paul Beckwith Climate Change, uh, you can find all kinds of, uh, of, of my work on abrupt climate change, on the Arctic, on methane, and things like that. But what I want to do uh, here is just talk about how the, just some general things about how the overall climate is changing very rapidly and the human response is uh, completely insufficient to deal with the rapid changes that are occurring and uh, my views on, you know, I, I think we're, we're reaching a point where where the public is going to go from not caring or kind of tuning out climate change to going into a mode of sheer panic you know utter panic over my god we're all doomed you know we can't do a thing we've left it too late and you know pointing fingers at scientists for not communicating the problem you know enough for not standing up and yelling from the tops of buildings or are, you know, pointing fingers at politicians or pointing fingers, you know, maybe some of them will even point fingers where the fingers should be pointed. And that's really at the uh, denial industry. It's at the heavily funded um, oil company, you know, large corporations heavily funding uh, people to scream at the top of their lungs saying that climate change, oh, it's always happened, you know, humans are insignificant, we're not doing anything, you know, what can we do, it's a big planet, etc. You know, all of, the, all of this nonsense. I mean, that's where, where most of the blame uh, should, should go on stopping action on climate change. I mean, at this late stage, uh, you know, it's amazing to me that there's still people that are, you know, there's still denialist, uh, you know, uh, people with large voices. You know, mostly, um, you know, there's loads of trolls. I mean, if there's any decent article in a mainstream uh, paper or blog or something, art news article online, then look at the comment sections. I mean, it's just swarmed by, you know, trolls. Oh, climate change all claims climate change has always happened you know uh, what can we do to the planet uh, you know it's a big place and uh, you, like it's just it's at this stage we should be over this I mean these people will go into hiding I think very soon when the public reaches the uh, panic stage over climate change and what's it going to take to uh, cause that well that's a big question I mean I think it's coming soon um, you know, you actually have some mainstream scientists like Stefan Ramsdorf or something saying, we kind of have a climate emergency right now. Like, you know, what is that? Like, we kind of have a climate emergency? Um, you know, a very strong statement from Mr. Ramsdorf. You know, it's impressive, but what does a kind of mean? Um, you know, just a few days ago, um, the uh, paper, well, last summer, uh, James Hansen put together a uh, put a paper online about superstorms you know measuring these um, about data about in the past we had these massive storms which pushed uh, boulders up very high you know on islands in uh, the Bahamas and uh, other places and you know this happened when there was a rapid transition um, in uh, in temperature um, and we had very large uh, temperature gradients over short distances and you know over the ocean and Therefore we had large pressure differences and very high winds and these high winds had very large fetch over the ocean and generated these massive waves which then pushed up boulders onto onto uh, shorelines and things like that. So this paper came out originally back in um, Well, it was it was I think it was June of 2015 and something like that and anyway, when it came out, June, July, maybe, you know, about that time. And when it came out, I thought, yeah, this is an extremely significant paper. And I actually uh, filmed nine different uh, YouTube videos going through the paper sequentially, um, breaking it down, um, putting it in the context of abrupt climate change. I mean, it covered a lot of things. It didn't cover everything. 
Um, it didn't talk about methane in the in the Arctic coming up. It didn't talk about um, it didn't relate the uh, huge Arctic temperature amplification to uh, the jet stream waviness. Um, it did talk about the large pool of cold water south of Greenland and how that was affecting the uh, ocean currents and uh, how it was affecting uh, the jet stream patterns across the Atlantic, um, specifically causing uh, tremendous storms in uh, the UK and uh, other parts of, of Western Europe. So, so this paper passed peer review and was released um, just recently. And then it's picked up uh, by a lot of the mainstream media, like the Washington Post and the New York Times. And, you know, these places all ran articles sort of uh, saying, you know, talking actually about abrupt climate change. You know, climate change can happen over a matter of decades, rapid climate change versus centuries were some of the headlines. And, you know, super storms are on the way and, you know, it's a little flurry of press and it'll die down, of course. Um, but we will reach a point very soon when it doesn't die down, when it becomes mainstream headlines and um, it doesn't die down. And I think, you know, I think about four or five years ago, I said that this would likely happen when we lost the sea ice in the Arctic, when we had this blue ocean event for the first time and people could, you know, see on... Um, images, okay, we've got no white, you know, no white crown at the surface of the, at the, uh, you know, in the North Pole. No white crown to reflect uh, solar radiation and keep the thing cool. No snow and ice to absorb a lot of the heat. Um, so instead of that, when there's no snow and ice there, that heat rises, raises the temperature of the water significantly. It thaws out the, um, the, uh, the, the seafloor sediments and um, there's fracturing and there's methane coming up from methane cloth rates which are which are basically lattices of frozen water surrounding methane molecules and when the uh, ice is melted the methane is released the expansion of volume is 160 well, 180 times something like that um, and it builds up pressure and then it can uh, elevate regions of the seafloor, such as what we're seeing on the, in the Kara Sea right now. Or if it's on land, it can build up pressure and blow big uh, pockets of earth up and create these massive craters. Um, and these things are popping up over Siberia. We're seeing lots of these. We've, this is a new phenomenon. We've seen lots of these things appearing over Siberia in the last few years. Um, we haven't, I haven't heard of any in Alaska yet, but it's just a matter of time before they come to Alaska too. And um, we are seeing large rises of methane in the northern regions, uh, as high as up in the high atmosphere over the Arctic. There's been a few days where we've had over 3,000 parts per billion of methane recorded from satellite, by satellites over the Arctic. The methane level is about 1800, 1850 parts per billion globally, global average in the atmosphere. Um, that range, that level ranged from about 350 to 700 parts per billion over the last million years, and uh, we're way above that. CO2 varied between 180 and about 280, 300 parts per million over the last million years or so and we're about 405 and we rose 3.09 in 2015 and 2.7 2.8 something in 2014 meanwhile people are patting themselves on the back saying that global emissions have stabilized in 2015 2014 there's a big disconnect there and I did a separate video on that so i guess uh you know myself in studying this problem for years i it, it still amazes me how we can see all of these articles saying climate change happening faster than normal. Scientists amazed at, uh, you know, at the melt rates in Antarctica or Greenland. Like how can people, how can scientists continue to be amazed and think, how can things always happen faster than normal? Like, like, like Google faster than normal on climate change and put together a little report. It's amazing. Now Google slower than normal or happening climate change proceeding as expected and you'll find almost nothing 
So this is a huge problem. There's a problem in the way it, this um, issue is being communicated to people in the scientific community when it's completely one-sided. Everything's happening faster than normal. Everything's happening and surprising scientists. And the IPCC models do not account for methane. They say methane is not going to come up and it's not really, it's when I say not accounted for, they don't account or, or uh, they don't run any models on the case if methane comes up big time from permafrost or tundra or, or uh, from the clathrates in the ocean floor. This isn't in the IPCC models. They, there's 20, 30 models and they're continuously used and the envelopes are measured and the deviations are measured and all of this stuff's in the IPCC reports. And in their infinite wisdom, they neglected to uh, consider methane coming up in large quantities. The cold blob uh, south of Greenland, the warm blobs in the Pacific. You know, when scientists start calling things blobs, you know, start to you know run for the hills and get extremely worried because it means that they don't really know, you know, what's going on. And you know, we're seeing, you know, in the last. Uh, five, six years, maybe ten years, I mean, we started to see a change in the statistics of extreme weather events around the planet. The frequencies, severities, and durations of, of floods and droughts and uh, extreme weather events like this, heat waves has increased greatly. It's ramping up. The insurance companies are, are very aware of this. Um, the public is waking up to these problems and when we have the first blue ocean event in the Arctic, the Arctic temperature amplification greatly accelerates because of the declining albedo, Arctic's getting darker, but also because of the latent heat effect. And um, the, the warming, we ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Um, the warming in the Arctic is gonna skyrocket far beyond anything we've seen. And this is going to really monkey way more with our weather system, our extreme weather system, you know, events and stuff will, will skyrocket, probably a factor of 10 or 20. And then, and so we're, we're, it's just a matter of time before the public starts to panic over this. Um, you know, in Paris, it's all the talks about a two degree, you know, two is too much, 1.5 above pre-industrial. Well, all of February 2016, we were 1.57 degrees above pre-industrial. In fact, there's a day, uh, I think it was March 3rd or something, when the global, the Northern Hemisphere was above over two degrees Celsius warmer than normal. I mean, one and a half degrees or two degrees, you know, these numbers are really meaningless. I mean, the, the, the temperatures are rising much faster over the land, for example, than the oceans. But the oceans are, are warming. They've taken in over 90% of the heat. You know, there was no, there was no hiatus in, in, uh, global, in, in the heat being absorbed by the Earth. Sure, most of the heat was going into the oceans and the air temperatures were, um, they, 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 they kind of leveled off for a, a decade there, but the heat was still going into the oceans. The air temperature was still rising, but not at the same rate that it is normally rising. And the Arctic was skyrocketing in terms of temperature and the ocean still acidifying. So like we have an emergency situation on our hands. There's, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, wave your hands, jump up and down. You know, what can we do? We, we have an emergency situation on our hands. So are people going to be stupid or are people going to continue to be dumb about this? We need to zero fossil fuel emissions. There's no question. We need to do it on the level with the urgency of the, say, the Manhattan Project to build the bomb in World War II or the Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe and rebuild Japan after the war was over. We need to do this uh, full speed ahead. It's not a technology issue, it's a political issue. We also need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere so that the ocean uh, acidity stabilizes. We preserve the marine food chain because if we keep acidifying the oceans, we're gonna lose the phytoplankton and it's gonna cascade up the food chain and we can't live on Earth, on, sorry, land animals can't live without, the, without a vibrant ocean marine uh, ecosystem. And we also need to cool the Arctic. We need to cool the Arctic because the methane is going to come pouring out um, and we're going to go to a green Arctic. We're going to have no snow and ice in the Arctic. We're going to be in a much warmer world. And this is all happening on decades, uh, decade or two time scales. Um, this is becoming very, very evident to many, many more people. I've been talking about it for five years. 
So please have a look at my website, paulbeckwith.net, and please make a lot of noise to any decision makers that you know to let people know, yes, we have a climate change emergency. So thank you for your time.